Please join me in the book of Romans as we are going through uh, this book uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we're to chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. This morning's message is the Christian and government. We're the section. We're in the section of Romans now that is practical Christian living. We have correct doctrine. We're saved by grace uh, through Jesus Christ, faith in Him, believing in Him, the sacrifice that He uh, did on the cross so that our sins can be washed away and we can be forgiven. And now in Christ we are in a right standing before a holy God because we can stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ and not our own. That's correct doctrine. And this correct doctrine now affects our life. We're new creations in Christ and we should live from a heart of love Loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving one another, and that those moral commandments affect the way we live. And it affects our citizenship. So please stand this morning for the reading of God's Word. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes, to whom taxes are due, everyone say, ouch. <laughs> customs, to whom customs, fear, to whom fear, honor, to whom honor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are sovereign, and you are in full control of the affairs of men. And Lord, we ask that you will increase our faith, even in areas of this world, Lord, where they are persecuted by their government, even in our own country that they're immoral on their decisions. Help us, Lord, Help us to be good citizens so that we can spread the gospel, the power of God that saves. So God, I pray, please speak to us through your written word this morning for your glory and for the edification of this church. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. You may be seated. I kind of pronounced heavenly the word for in this passage of scripture because 
the Apostle Paul to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, such a great teacher, he explains the reasons why we should be good citizens. And I want you to understand when the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans, Nero was the emperor. When the Apostle Peter wrote his epistles, Nero was the emperor. Nero wanted to be worshipped by the citizens. The Apostle Paul was beheaded by Nero. Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul would not say, Caesar is my Lord. Paul said, Jesus is my Lord. And he was beheaded for the gospel. The apostle Peter was also martyred during the reign of Nero, but both men inspired by the Holy Spirit said, be good citizens. Be good citizens. Nero, during his reign, was a madman, and he set Rome on fire. And he watched Rome burn, and guess what Nero did? He blamed the Christians for burning Rome. Therefore, Christians were under great persecution. Why? Because the emperor, the government, lied about the Christians. Nero had them set on poles, had them, had crystal poured on them, and he lit them on fire, had them light them on fire and he used the bodies of Christians burning to light his garden at night. That's evil. That's evil. So, that's the background of this passage of Scripture. And a few years ago, it would be hard, in a way, to apply this to our lives but just think in the last three years in our own country in the last three years churches were told not to meet publicly in the last few years we've been told that men can marry men and women can marry women and it is legal in our own nation in our state of Louisiana, our legislator could have stopped abortion in our very conservative Bible Belt state. And our legislators that we voted to go up to go down to Baton Rouge to stop abortion had the opportunity to do it, and they did not do it. That's our government. And we are to be good citizens. And we as Americans, we don't like to be told what to do, do we? Our history shows that. Many of you are serving our country or have served our country in the military. And we love our country. We love the freedom that we have. But I want to remind you, there are Christians across the world that are under persecution, like China, and they have a strong underground church in disobedience to their government. And when our, govern, our government will throw us in jail when we say homosexuality is sin, 
And that is called hate speech. And they throw us in prison. That would be from our government. So do we obey or disobey? As we look in this passage of scripture, I wrote down five things. Five things as a citizen that we need to understand. First of all, I want us to understand that the United States of America that we love, this is not our kingdom. This world is not our home. This is not our kingdom. We are not of this world. We are in the kingdom of God and we are His children. And the kingdom of God has come in the manner the kingdom now is in men's hearts, but there is a kingdom that is coming. But it's not here yet. So, when we're told something by our government, we need to realize this is not our kingdom. Secondly, our allegiance. Our allegiance as born-again believers is not to our country first. It is to Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is our King. And we are His children and citizens so our first primary priority in decision making is that our allegiance is to Jesus first. Now that should make us good citizens. But our government can go slap crazy tomorrow and we've got to understand our allegiance is to Jesus first. Thirdly, is it a moral issue? When our government does something, or when we're told to do something or not to do something, is it a moral issue? For instance, same-sex marriage is a sin before a holy God. We must call it a sin for people to repent and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, they got to realize they're sinners. We had to realize that we needed saving. Abortion is murder. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court or Congress or any government says, abortion is murder. It's a moral issue. And I'm going to step aside and say this. Any man or woman that is part of thinking abortion is okay, it doesn't matter what political side you're on, if you think abortion is okay, that tells me what kind of person you are. That's it. That's, that tells me if I'm going to vote for you or not. Is it a moral issue? Fourth, is it a deny my faith issue? Is the government telling me to deny my Lord? Is the government telling me to deny the things of my faith? Is it a faith issue? Number five, is it a gospel issue? Or is it, if I obey, can it help me to advance the gospel? Or is it to deny the gospel 
And then the decision is if it's to deny my faith issue or to deny my uh, gospel issue or who my allegiance is to or what kingdom I'm part of. We got to be like the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John when the very man that sentenced Jesus to death said you cannot teach or speak in the name of that Jesus anymore. They said, I can't help but talk about Him. I can't help but talk about my Jesus. Is it a gospel issue? So, can we have experienced some things. I pastored a full-time church during the 2020 COVID. I've been told I did it all wrong. I've been told I did it all right. <laughs> but I went by these five principles and the deacons of that church and I went by these principles. Our government, now other states, it's a different story. We live in Louisiana. As long as schools were closed and all that, and the, and the public government things were closed, and we obeyed. And we shared the gospel through social media. We, uh, I tell you, when people can come to the parking lot in their pajamas and, and hold worship, you can get a lot more people in the parking lot than you can here. <laughs> but it was, we did not deny our faith or the gospel. And we were good citizens during that time. But if they ever said, you can't no longer be. That's a whole different ball game then, isn't it? That's an example. So, that was just the introduction, folks. But let's go through this, and, and we will point out some main things from this passage of Scripture. Uh, Romans 13, verse 1, Let every soul be subject or be obedient to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. In the book of Daniel, in chapter 4, you can look up it later, but Nebuchadnezzar uh, was king and it looked what all I've done and God showed him in the words of Nebuchadnezzar himself it is God who sets up kings. It is God who sets up the governments and is in full control of it. And yet in that same book, in Daniel, such a godly man, later on in the book of Daniel, the king was tricked to make a decree that no one could pray except to him. What did Daniel do? The advisor to the king himself went and prayed to the God of heaven instead of to the king. That's the two main examples from Daniel. But all government authorities, that power, that authority is given by God. In John chapter 19, verses 10 and 11, Pontius Pilate says this in John chapter 19, verse 10, Then Pilate said to him, speaking of Jesus, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You can have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Pilate, 
I could call 12 legions of angels right now. But I came here to die for you and for everybody else who will believe. Yes. So, the government, and yet we can look in church history, the evil governments that abused that power, that authority that God gave them for mass murder, Hitler, Stalin, and yet God, who is in full control, and we will understand it better by and by, He is sovereign, but God can work good even through evil governments. And I tell you what, we're, we're close here in America Amen. over this homosexual issue. And according to church history, when the church is persecuted, that's when the church really becomes the church. And you know who's real and who's not. Do I want to experience it? No. But those countries that under persecution, their, their faith is so strong and vibrant and they live the gospel. And may you and I live the gospel before our community. But God, in His sovereignty, is in full control. And it says in verse 2, Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Now I want to remind you about these five principles that I gave you at the beginning. But when we resist the law of the land, we will pay for it. So live without fear. Live in a good conscience that you are obeying the law. I don't know about you, but here's an example. If I go, when I go home today and I drive 65 miles per hour down Highway 8, my conscience is saying, well, is it around this corner? <laughs> is he going to catch me right here? But if I'm driving 55, I have no worries. I won't suffer. Now there are good and bad law enforcers. But again, when we obey, we do not suffer these ordinances. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. You see, our government and our government officials are there supposedly to protect us. Now, we got to admit, they're lacking right now. Good is called evil and evil is good when hundreds of people can ransack a business and steal everything and no one does anything about it. They're not doing what they're supposed to do as law, law enforcers and our government. So they're the ones that are lacking, but we must obey. We're not the ones going and, and murdering or stealing or being illegal. We obey the ordinances. And it says, verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to do good works, but to evil... Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. And you will have praise from the same. Verse 4. For he is God's minister to you for good, to protect us. Our, our military, our government is to protect the citizenship, our law enforcement, which are, we're very grateful for. They're there to protect us. 
But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. And the sword is not a pat on the hand. A sword is to kill you. Eye for an eye and a two for a two. That's the government's role. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, which means, that word means to be under authority. And if, if you have served in the military, you understand that. In the, when I was in the military, I had wonderful super, uh, civilian supervisors and NCOs over me, and I've also had very sorry ones. I have. But, as being under their authority, I respected their rank and their office. And that's authority. So even today, we must respect as believers those offices above us and pray for them. Also, it says in verse 5, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake, when we're obeying the law, we should have no worries. Verse 6. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. And, and to pay taxes is to help them to protect us and to run things. Now, we as Americans, most of us, we don't want a big government, do we? we we're individuals. We, we believe if you work hard and, and, and you study and you work, you will succeed. At least you have a better chance at succeeding. So, but we pay taxes. Now, the government provides uh, incentives and and deductions, there's nothing wrong when, when it's the government's law. Do all that you can to deduct, right? But what you owe, you better pay. And because we're good citizens. Verse 7. And again, Brother Travis read that passage of Scripture that is in Matthew chapter 22. 15 through 22 when Jesus said whose image is on that coin they said Caesar's and he said give to Caesar what's due to Caesar and to God what is God so render verse 7 render therefore to all their due taxes to whom taxes are due and again that is um Respect of the office, reverence of the office. And it says customs to whom customs. Again, uh, respect of that authority, understanding that God put authority in place. It, it, there must be a, a governing authority. If we did not have a governing authority and everyone did what was right in their own eyes, it would be chaos. So, our triune God established three institutions. First, the family, the church, and a lawful government. Those three institutions God has established and ordained. So, customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear in verse 7. Again, that is uh, restraint. When you fear something, it restrains you. 
So if you're a thief and you go and break in someone's home, if you come to my home tonight at 1 a.m. in the morning, you better be prepared to be feared when you hear a boom. Okay? If I'm supposed to protect my family, I may give you what I have, but you're not going to take it from me. So our, our government, our law enforcement... That restraint, that fear is to, to keep order. It restrains us. And it says, honor to whom honor. Again, that is part of our submission. Submitting to that authority above us. Honor. Honor. Who should be the best citizens in the United States of America? Christians. Who should be the best citizens in every country? Christians. Christians. Again, our, the questions, is it about our kingdom? Is it about our allegiance? Is it about a moral issue? Is it to deny my faith or is it to deny the gospel of Jesus Christ? Those five questions we must ask every time. And if it does not cross those lines, then we should obey. Obey to the best of our ability and show respect. Again, in chapter 12, Chapter 12 of Romans, verse 18, this ties into this passage. Verse 18 says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. To the best of our ability, and Lord willing, next time, we will see the reason, and it's because of love. The love of God and the love of neighbor. We live in interesting times, don't we? Interesting times. And there may come a time when our government crosses the line and we got to say no. But we better be very wise when we do it. Is it a no because it will hinder the gospel? Is it a no so that we can advance the gospel? That's the question. Because the gospel... Listen, folks. It's not a man. If we put the right man in office of president, he can't save America. He can't. We all know this as believers. The only thing that can change America is the gospel of Jesus Christ and that alone. Yes, we should try to put good men and women in office to the best of our ability, uh, get involved as citizens, but ultimately we know that only Jesus can change things. He can change the heart. Amen, church? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, again, we thank you for your word. And we thank you the, the boundaries that you have set for us so that we can live the Christian life with your help. So, Lord, this week, help us to pray for those above us our nation, our nation's leaders, our state, our state's leaders. And oh God, may they seek you in the wisdom of your word when they make decisions. And help us to all understand that we will all stand before the judge. The judge that knows our hearts, knows our thoughts, and the motives of everything that we do. And Lord, may we have boldness. 
because of our love for you. Again, Lord, help us to tend to eternal things during this invitation. Lord, please move in hearts. If, if someone needs to receive you, Lord Jesus, as Savior, Lord of their life, please may your Holy Spirit influence their heart at this time. And we will give you the praise. And in the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen.